War Pugs, and it's time for episode two of the Labardi Tales. And this was requested way back in the day by Snow Everlasting. Um, so the first part of this revolved around our glorious agent Lombardi tracking down elves and winding up getting chopped up by kidney farmers. Um, he wasn't exactly chopped up and he didn't die. We also learned Lombardi is almost seven feet tall and weighs nearly 300 pounds, so I'm guessing he is very, very popular with short women. In any case, we're going to keep on moving on this to the next chapter of the Lombardi Tales, which would be Grasp of Reality. So, with Grasp of Reality, we have Urban Legends, Grasp of Reality now. Two things that I have very big problems with. Because um, I'm worried about Urban Legends all the time. I don't screw with them. I just don't screw with them at all. And the second thing, grasp on reality. You guys know my grasp on reality can be best labeled as tenuous. So, we're going to jump into this. Again, all the Vulcan's links are down below in the, in the description below. That'll probably be the last time I mention it in this series. But, you guys already know that. You guys know how I operate. Let's get into it. Name's Max Lombardi. Hi, Max. I've been an agent for ten goddamn years. <laughs> I don't know why that got me. You want to know what it's like? Let's go. Let me tell you about it. Let's hear it. The Lombardi Tales. Yes. Let me tell you about reality benders. Okay. First off, we like to call them Bixby's. Why? One, in case someone accidentally says something in front of a civilian, it don't tip them off. Two, if you're talking to a reality bender, they might not know all they can do, and you don't want to give them any ideas. Right. These fuckers are dangerous. You see one you don't engage unless you absolutely have to. If you do have to, be polite. Try to think happy thoughts. Yeah. Maybe you'll have a good day. Probably not. Whenever you can, let the experts deal with them. We don't try containing them, most of the time. Yeah, the Foundation don't usually work that way, but we like to have a world to live in, so on this point, we usually agree with the GOC. Yeah. They're better gone. Yeah. Okay, so you're fighting someone who can pretty much do anything. Right. How do you stop them? Well, first off, they can't do anything they ain't thought of, like maybe they can all read minds. But if they ain't thought about doing it, don't know they can then they're not going to try it. Remember, they're not smarter than you. They may be able to do different things, might know things you don't, but they're not smarter. Second, they got to concentrate. We had one asshole. He decided he was going to know about everybody watching him. Fucker killed 20 of us before we had just a bunch of us rush him. Huh. Couldn't get all of us, you know? Which kind of Bixby's are the worst? Depends how you mean. For my money, it's a kid, Bixby. Almost mm. always ends with a bullet. Sniper can usually take him out pretty easy, but actually killing him? You show me a guy who just shot a three-year-old. I show you somebody with some damage upstairs. Yeah. There are worse things you'll do for the Foundation. But not a lot. Not we were actually... Well, I'll say it now, after this. Hardest to take down? Usually someone around late teens, early 20s. Much younger, they don't know how to do as much harm. Older than that, they ain't got much flexibility in their thinking to try anything real out there. Late teens, early 20s, they're gonna experiment. They're gonna try anything that springs to mind. They're not gonna be slow and careful in figuring out what they can do. We get one of them, we pull out the big guns. Now, it don't always end with us killing them. Sometimes, especially the older ones, we can talk with them a little. Convince them the world ain't worth it. Get them to move on somewhere else. A lot of them will even do it on their own. So far, ain't one of them ever came back. No one knows why. Maybe this world is really that much of a shithole. Huh. Or maybe something's eating them. I don't know. Anyway, now you see what I mean when I say a giant turtle ain't no big deal. Even if it is <laughs> spitting fire at us. Come on, Gamora. I was recently reminded of the wonders of Gamora. That 
that's it. <sighs> bite size lore. I actually really like this. This is bite size. Doesn't doesn't crowd out anything. Me and me and the hospital were watching, actually a little bit earlier today. Um, she really likes survival shows. That that's her thing. That's her thing. She really, really likes survival shows. And um, she was watching... We were watching this one survival show together while we were having some dinner. Hold on. Woman's bothering me. Oh, God. She's messaging me about stuff. Hold on. I'll do it in a second, sweetums. Anyhow. Um, we were watching this one survival show, and they're stranded on a beach, and... They all go down to the beach one day, like this one guy comes and grabs them because sea turtles have hatched on the beach. And they're all they're all doing they're all trying to get down to the water. And it is just one of those experiences. They're sitting there looking at it and they're just like really like they're not gonna they're they're starving. These people are starving, but at the same time, they're not gonna hunt the sea turtles because it's just really, really cool to watch them. And the the sea turtles are getting into the water. They're moving away and stuff like that. And then later on that day, they're going back down the same beach and they notice that there's a bunch of dead sea turtle babies. And some of them are like, let's pick them up and use them for food. And me and my wife looked at each other and we're like looking at the TV, looking at each other. These people hadn't had a meal in weeks. Some of them hadn't had a solid meal in a few weeks. And only about three of them out of the 12, 11, 12 people that were there, only about three of them decided to eat the sea turtles. And it's just like if they found a hardback turtle, a terrestrial tortoise, on the land, they would have killed and eaten, no problem. But certain animals hold a certain thing with us, and it was actually really bothering. It was it was bothering me and the wife when they started to cook them. So I was like, "Oh my god, just..." Duh. And for some people, that that doesn't make any sense. You know, for some people, that doesn't make any. It does. It really doesn't make any sense. But if it does make sense to you, you understand. And if it doesn't make sense to you. I get it, you know. I really do. You, you're like, hey, that's food. They're they're already gone. What are you gonna do? You're gonna just leave them there to rot, or are you gonna make use of them? Yeah, especially if people are starving. But at the same time, we were just sitting there looking at, it like, my God, I cannot believe this is happening. <sighs> Any case, war pugs. We're gonna move on to here from here. Keep on listening to tales of Max Lombardi. And learn about reality benders and other things like that. I, I went off that tangent because he started talking about the how the kids were the hardest ones to deal with. The, the really young ones were the hardest ones to deal with. And it just reminded me of that for some reason. My brain is weird. You guys know this. We're pugs. I am out. I have, I have a dream. I have a dream.